Hello and welcome back to Shelf Center. This is Bryce. I wanted to bring you my top five books of the year so far. I was going to do 10, but it just started being just books of the same series and whatnot. So I was just like, you know what? Top five, it'll be cleaner. It'll make more sense. So let's just jump right into it. Book number five. Book number five of the year so far. We're gonna go with Jade City by Fonda Lee. Jade City just blew my mind. It was so cool. It was such a, just the, the magic system along with the, the mobster type, you know, Yakuza and everything going on, the control, the everything, the, just the, the, the fights to the, the, the characters. I've just loved some of these characters that I can't get out of my mind to this day. Jade City really just it blew my mind. It, it deserved the World Fantasy Award for me. It just, I can't wait for more and I need to get back into that series because it just really blew my mind. So that's, we're starting at number five. You can imagine where this is going here. <laughs> um, also, excellently narrated and so on audio that was definitely the way to go uh, but also I'm sure eye reading uh, would also work quite well for you <laughs> all right then number four we're gonna go with uncrowned by Will White this is one again I've read so many this year this was I probably could have populated my full top 10 with cradle series books but I just decided to stick with one and it was the most recent when I made this list I have I'm since just about finished with winter steel and this is it's even bit like I swear each one just keeps getting better and better so we'll see I'm not quite done with that one so it doesn't count yet but uncrowned this uh, you know it just some minor spoilers but it's a big tournament and just I love me a good tournament I love me a good Mortal Kombat style <laughs> tournament um, and just the I, I, there's just it's it's so much fun progression fantasy I just never realized how much I would love it and I really really love it apparently um, because I can't get enough of these books uh, I just keep jumping into the next one and I'm gonna be really sad when I uh, I've finished this series but guess what there's more out there not only uh, rereads of this series and and the author coming out with books pretty consistently here but also there's lots of other progression type fantasies out there and I want to try lit RPG I, I assume it has some of the same elements because there is uh, in, in RPG there is some of that kind of leveling up situation so anyway really just loving the cradle series and cannot wait to read more uh, uncrowned I believe is number seven uh, yeah, because Winter Steel is number eight, and I just, they keep getting better and better. All right, number three for the year. Number three, we are going with Grand Conspiracy. This is one, The Wars of Light and Shadow. I'm so happy to see get so much action these days because uh, with lots of people reading it. <laughs> and getting lots of people into this is just amazing to me. I, I just think that Janny Wirtz is one of the most underread authors out there that more and more people need to experience. Just the pure emotion that I just never thought or understood that you could get from a book. This is up there with some of the best series of all times. And I'm just so happy to see this getting out there. This is book five, so I didn't want to get too deep into this. This is a no-spoiler top five of the year, but I cannot recommend the series enough. It's complicated. It's advanced fantasy. I put it in the expert level of fantasy, so, you know, I always recommend, you know, maybe do your building blocks first of, of some other series, and I have videos on that you can check out. But uh, uh, this is one that if you're ready to um, to commit, if you're in the right mood, if you're really ready to take on something that is going to be worth the effort that you put into it, because it will be, it absolutely will be, but it takes effort to put into it. These are some of my favorite books that take that effort in the in the you know in the beginning to get to just such wonderful payoffs hence why i'm such a big malzahn fan can't go a, a list apparently without mentioning malzahn but anyway excellent excellent book all right then we've got this was one of my i mean just this is I, i'm already going okay i probably need to revamp my top 10 
uh, of all time for fantasy books because of this trilogy. But this one I grabbed, the, my favorite in the trilogy, and that's going to be Mad Ship by Robin Hobb. Mad Ship is book number two in the Live Ship trilogy, uh, which often the second book is kind of the weakest of a trilogy. Not so here. Mad Ship was my favorite. It just there's so much that goes on. There's so many things, so many emotions, so so much all that that Robin Hobb is able to do with these wonderful characters and that you care so much about. And you just don't even see it going to these levels at all. Uh, but it's all built in there. It's all just so well done and so built into these characters that Robin Hobb is just a master of this character work. Uh, just like Jenny Wirtz too, is just, you get, uh, uh, you know, I've, I've had an emotional year apparently, <laughs> but these, just the Life Ship trilogy has has jumped up so much. I, I enjoyed and considered the Farseer trilogy a, a favorite trilogy, right? A, a favorite in, in fantasy for me, but Life Ship Traders just elevated it to another level, and I, I enjoyed this even much more than I did Farseer, I'm very much looking forward to Tawny Man, hopefully soon. All right, number one, this is probably one that you're not going to be too surprised about. Um, I uh, Anyway, it's just kind of taking over my life right now, but it's going to be Words of Radiance, book two in the Stormlight Archive. This one, I just love this cover. Isn't that such a cool cover? Um, just taking from way of kings that does such a good job of setting up this world and these characters and some betrayals some all kinds of things but then to take it to a whole different level uh to to really just to this i mean it's it gets even more political which i always like that's why i'm a big game of thrones fan and all that the that uh you know this it, which is so political this really it's not just the magic in, in the world here. It's, it's now, well, it's, it's, it is still the world because I think politics does a good job of, of world building, but we really get into the politics and, and having to kind of convince people, not just on a, you know, at the point of a sword level of convincing, but really try to convince people to do the right thing. Um, but then also the magic <laughs> it gets expanded upon. And I just love that we're kind of learning with these characters just how to use their magic, how they're using them. And it's just really fun, really so much stuff. Oh my gosh, that Sander Lanch there, you gotta just don't even like, <laughs> don't at me. No, it's <laughs> that it's just like, he does it. I don't know how he keeps doing it. And the way of Kings, I just thought you can't, you can't beat that. And I'm, I'm on the fence as to whether it's been beaten, but it doesn't really matter at this point. What does matter is that they are, that it's just excellently done and well done and so done uh, that I, you know, I just can't get enough of the series. I cannot wait for the next one. I'm so excited to keep jumping on and move, to keep moving on with, with this series and, and to see what else we have. I'm really saddened that we're, and I knew, I knew I was calling this, months ago or weeks ago at least uh, that this was going to get the the fifth book was going to get put off and it is our it has been announced that it probably won't come out till 2024 uh, just from looking at the progress bars on sanderson's website so we'll see uh how that goes i'm debating just kind of slowing down my reread uh to kind of just you know make sure i can have plenty to read over the next uh uh, you know, just to keep things fresh in my mind so I don't have to reread again. Because um, I just have so much to read. Not that I wouldn't love a good reread of the series. It's so amazing. But that's why I did this, trying to get ready for book five in this wonderful series. Uh, anyway, there's my top five of the year so far. We'll see how the ending of the year uh, pans out. It's kind of, I mean, when I look at that list, I'm like, I don't know how you're going to beat it. I don't know how I'm going to possibly beat it unless like Oathbringer is really good. And I guess it probably is, but, um, I don't know. I don't know if anything's going to budge this top five. So we'll see anyway. Hey, what's your top five of the year so far? What's your top 10? How's it going? Uh, let me know. I love talking this stuff. I love finding new books to put on my TBR and then never read. So anyway, I, 
thank you for all your support as usual and don't forget to like and subscribe if you haven't and you like this kind of silly thing all right we'll talk to you later